Thanks for tuning into the 2020 season of Cigars, Liquor, and More. As we join our buddies Bill Howdy. and our other brother Daryl, smoke up, Johnny, in the backyard speakeasy as they discover their thoughts on cigars, liquor, and anything else that comes to mind. All right, here we are. Rock and roll. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Vinny. I'm Vinny. All right, we have a guest today. Vinny, he's a friend of ours. He hangs out in En Fuego. He's a lawyer. And he has gotten much more involved in bankruptcy law recently in that he started his own company. Was it Chase? Still doing a little work for Chase, right? No. I, no. Um, uh, um, city. City. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Right. For City. Yeah. And starting your, own, starting your own business. I love that. I love when people start their own business. His own law firm. The, yes. The yep. firm. Um, got done working for the man. <laughs> now I'm working for my own man. Yes. You mean your children? Well, yeah. <laughs> and my wife. Yeah. You are you are now the man. Yes. All right. Well, I'm we're lighting up now. Everybody's lit up but me. So let me describe to you what we're having. We have the Ave Maria Immaculata. This is an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, a mixed Cuban seed Nicaraguan filler. And Nicaraguan binder. It is mellow to medium in body. This is the six by fifty-four, and sticker price is about seven fifty. Now Vinny has something a little different. He brought his. He brought his. Uh, oh no! So this is the old world. So in the same thread of having a mild cigar, got him an old world because I could not find another Ave Maria. It just kind of didn't happen. Hate it when it happens. But like that. got yep. another. It actually Fernandez. says New World. New World. Sorry. Yes. The A.J. Fernandez New World. So both of them are Fernandez. Welcome to the New World. Mm. Okay. Oh. Wow, this is a really easy draw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very easy draw. Ooh, I way over lit it. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Too much fire. Flame on. Too this, much fire. This might actually not go out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm notorious for allowing them to go out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you you do. That's all right. That's all right. That's man. all right. We, we won't. Every now and then we we'll say take tonight. a puff. <laughs> all right. So, Bill, what spirit are we having this with? What are we have? We are having Eagle Rare. Uh, it's the ten year straight Kentucky bourbon. For <laughs> show to people, uh, number one mash bill from Buffalo Place Trace, ten uh, percent or less of rye MSRP, twenty nine dollars. Uh, incredibly, uh, or strangely difficult to get around here. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know why. They just seem, they seem to fly off the shelves they whenever do. they get them. They, they, it's the whole Buffalo Trace, Cesarac kind of line. Everybody is bidding them up. They all go aftermarket. This one I had to order online, and, I don't know, just, it's a thing. Oh, but it's... It's good though. I really like it. Well, let's let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I'm drinking something different. <laughs> oh, you brought the BSB? I did. Oh, I thought uh, you poured. I thought you poured some of this. No, okay, you no. handed me the bottle, but I already had poured this. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So, um, I'm a rebel. So I yeah, guess yeah. I'm drinking some of this. Uh, well, in that case, we should have gotten some bourbon. of the Rebel Yell 100. Oh uh, well. <laughs> no, I got BSB 103. <laughs> Nice. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Daryl doesn't Excellent. like it. It's too sweet for him. But. It's very sweet. Is that the the brown sugar? Yes. yes. Brown it's, sugar. It's a Heritage Distilling Company brown sugar bourbon 103 proof. Um, they have like a 63 proof. It's not as smooth. Um, and this has a really good aftertaste. Actually, the aftertaste is what told me to go back and get some. I wasn't yeah. going to get it. And a couple of minutes after trying a little taste, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, mm. it hangs on a little yeah. bit, and then you're, you're like, I, I, I kind of want some more. Yeah, so I went back and got a bottle. Yeah, yeah. it's got a, a long finish, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. it sits there To for get a while. technical about it. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> sweet, sweet drinks, they'll give you a little bit of a, like, kind of a gamey aftertaste. And this didn't. It had a really kind of full taste after it was over. 
and that was why I went back and grabbed a bottle. So it's not that I didn't like it. I just thought it was pretty sweet. Yeah, it's very sweet. It's and, very sweet. And it was, there's also heavy in cinnamon, right? Yeah, there's a, quite a bit of cinnamon taste yeah, to so, it. Yeah, so it's I got was a, like, okay. a little bite to the back of your throat from the cinnamon. Mm. Yeah. Well, n- not like a... Fireball. Fireball, thank you. Mm. Not like fi- not like a fireball. It's nah, fire- it's just a it's a taste. It's not fireball every like every bit of cinnamon. Vomit inducing. <laughs> <laughs> Can be. So, tell us about Labola or the uh, Labola. The Labula dot com um, is my website. Um, Spell it for the people. T H E L O B U E L A W dot com. Nice. Boom. Excellent. Um, we are. I should say we, me, it's, I'm a sole practitioner in every sense of the word. Um, there's me and just me. <laughs> um, I answer the phone. I do the books. I do the legal work. Um, started about six weeks ago um, after uh, about 25 years working in bankruptcy entirely uh, for banks and in representation of banks. Um, kind of got disenfranchised with working on that side of the uh, financial services business and wanted to do something for myself. I'm not in a position to start my own bank, so um, why not represent consumers in filing bankruptcy? Um, So I just took all of the the knowledge and know-how that I have from representing creditors in the bankruptcy process to now representing consumers. Um, I don't have any plans of doing business bankruptcy, just focusing on individuals and um, spouses filing bankruptcy as consumers, not businesses. And it's off. I mean, you've you've got six weeks. I mean, you've been planning this for a while. Yep. Yep. You worked your way into it, and uh, boom, what, two weeks? Two weeks and you had your first customer? Uh, About Yeah, about two and a a half weeks. Yeah. I guess I had my first client. Um, Yeah. And uh, this week I got two more. Ah, excellent. Yes. So now I've got the trifecta going. That must have happened <laughs> since uh, Tuesday. Uh, y- yeah. Um, <laughs> so was it? I got, yeah, I got Wednesday was Wednesday and Friday. Okay. Got two more. Nice. Um, yeah. So it's starting to Good. kind of pan out. And, um, you know, I'm still doing a little side work um, consulting. Um, but this is ultimately going to be my focus. Um, you know, hopefully in the next six months I can w- focus on this full time. Excellent. Oh, yeah. I, I love it when people start their own businesses. I mean, this oh, is, yeah. you know, cause the, the, the kind of thing I always say is when you work for somebody else, you're literally working for somebody else's benefit. And it just seems like that's an inefficiency. And then maybe that's the process engineer in me coming out. I'm like, that's inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to make as much money without giving other people the money. Oh, definitely. Yep. So I love it when people start their own businesses. I was very, very happy when you were like, oh, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, do it, do it, yep, do yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, we started talking about it. <laughs> I, I got, I guess I got the... Um, the bug really started bouncing around on my skull last summer um, when I went to Indianapolis for an industry event, um, a bankruptcy industry event uh, called the uh, National Association of Chapter 13 Trustees. And while I was there, it was... Um, that's, a, that's a long title. N-double-A-C-T. Um, they... Uh, it's an it's a organization that's not just creditors, but it's also consumer attorneys um, that are part of it because we're we're all part of the the whole process. And the Chapter Thirteen trustee is the court appointed trustee that um, is supposed to be the objective third party that manages the bankruptcy estates of of the the people who file. Um, so both creditors and debtors attorneys interact quite frequently with the trustees. Um, so all of the Chapter 13 trustees from all 50 states and U.S. Uh, properties have um, have a presence there. And it was five days of um, educational opportunities and um, attorneys and trustees and judges having uh, 
you know, panel discussions, and uh, got to hear a whole lot of um, discussion from the various parties involved in bankruptcy outside of an actual bankruptcy court. And it really got my, my wheels turning about why, why couldn't I do something like this? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, part of the reason why I went to law school years ago was <laughs> working with attorneys every day um, and some of them aren't the sharpest tools in the shed. <laughs> you find that in every industry. That's um, fact. Sure. And, you know, if they can do it, why can't I? So started kind of fantasizing more or less initially about what it would take to kind of break free. And unfortunately, at the time, I worked for Chase. Um, I was there actually on Chase's dime. So um, I couldn't do anything working for Chase, you know, one of the largest banks in the world. So right. nearly every bankruptcy has a conflict of interest with them. So right. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to bring any clients in if they had you know, a bank account or a credit card or something right. with Chase. So uh, I, you know, I, I couldn't do anything. And then I had an opportunity pop up um, in late November, or <clears throat> actually, I guess it was like early November, and um, a contract role um, with a different bank popped up and now being a contractor I wouldn't have the same conflicts of interest that I had as being an employee right um, so the contract role would gave me an opportunity to to do what I wanted to do at least early on get you know get the, the, the wheels greased and everything and get the business up and running without the conflict and uh, that actually panned out in early December and uh, for basically the last three weeks of December I was laying the groundwork to getting um, an office space and um, office website, space, website, uh, uh, email, uh, phone number, yeah. uh, social soft, presence, software. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I did did a lot of uh, a lot of the you know the the foundational work in December and early January, and um, started doing some online marketing, and um, still trying to feel that out. That's pretty convoluted. Uh, right. It's, area. It's, yeah. it's quite a maze, <laughs> isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It is. Um, so I got, I got my, I dipped my toes in a couple of different ponds of marketing. I got Facebook page and boosting blog posts on Facebook. Um, I got a Yelp ad um, and um, doing some pay-per-click advertising on Google. Um, and then I went and bought some leads from um, one of these legal website lead producing organizations. <laughs> And uh, the combination have led to mixed results, um, mostly less prolific than I would hoped for. <laughs> um, and now, you know, given six weeks of that, I got an idea of what kind of works. Um, and now I'm trying a couple of other opportunities, um, a different lead generation. Um, the one that I'm using apparently, oh, well, I knew this originally, but they'll send a lead, somebody will log on to a website and go into a chat um, about a particular area of the law, in this case bankruptcy, and um, they would send, they would give their information to the chat bot, I guess it would be, and um, that chat bot would then send their lead information to five or six attorneys. and. It's basically a race at that point. <laughs> um, and it seems that a lot of people do a lot of their bankruptcy searches at one in the morning. <laughs> so one in the wow. morning, we all get a lead and- You need a bot. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Funny you say that. Um, about two weeks after I started with this, I got a call from a salesman working for a company that actually does have a bot that works with uh, an answer bot yeah so okay. <laughs> um, they actually it's a caller bot oh. so um, they will when when a potential client puts their phone number into the chat and the lead comes to me they'll pick up the lead and immediately start calling there you go and they'll call until they answer and one, as soon as they answer they'll transfer their call to my line Wow, um, and so you could get a call at one thirty no, in the morning. They only do it during business hours. <laughs> okay, so they'll call them repeatedly until they answer. Okay, 
Um, so I don't know how effective that's going to be. That doesn't kick in until Monday, the, okay. yeah, the 17th. Um, so I don't know how that's going to work out. But um, they also offer an exclusive lead service where if you get a lead, similar deal, you'll, they, someone logs into their website and they'll only send it to one attorney. So and okay. you pay for you know however many leads you want for in the period of time that you want it. So they work within your budget. Obviously, the more you spend, the more leads you get. Right. So, so but, it, but it gives you a little bit of exclusivity. Yeah, it will be less, um, less uh, of my having to run to my laptop to send <laughs> to send emails. But I take a draw. I, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, in the area that, uh, that I'm glad you went into this area. So, this is all about starting it and getting it rolling. So, let's say I'm a lawyer and I'm interested in this sort of thing. Do you think you need 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Because you got 20 plus years of experience. Do you think that's important? Or do you think, no, you got five, you'd be good? Um, it really depends. I mean, bankruptcy is, is, is fairly complex, but it's, it's, it's very, it's kind of narrow. So, regimented. You, yeah, I mean, it's very, it's very, it's very uh, process driven. It's mostly documentary, um, so it's not like um, it's not like you're. I'm I'm not a litigator, so it's not like every litigation case is a different beast unto itself. Um, nearly all bankruptcies are very much the same. It's it's a very regimented process. Um, being new, I have, you know, I ha I'm still trying to feel out my, uh, my case management software and um, trying to figure out how to um, set up, like, task tracking. Um, so that's still something I'm working on. With three clients, it's pretty easy to manage. <laughs> 30 clients or 50 clients or 100 clients, I can imagine it can get pretty out of control. So I'm still working on getting... Yeah, but by getting, the time you have that, you'll know the software. It, exactly. And it'll yeah. roll smoothly. Exactly, exactly. So... So I'm, I'm fortunate where I'm, I'm able to start off slow and mm -hmm. um, get all the, the kinks worked out, you know, kind of behind the scenes on, on processing. Um, but for the most part, the, the three clients that I've got thus far are, are relatively, um, for me, routine uh, bankruptcy cases. For them, they're not. You know, <laughs> of course not. Yeah, so. Just to kind of clarify something, the... You going through in the background, um, dealing with the the software, doesn't affect anything client related. No, 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 no. no. So the the clients are still getting the service that they expect. Absolutely. You're just you're trying to f go through the wade through the waters of figuring out the software. Correct. So uh, the very first case that I had, um, a. The bankruptcy and most of the, all of the federal courts use electronic case filing. Um, so you have to have an online um, account where your credit card is attached to it and they charge you for the filings and um, everything's online. Everything now. has to be online. And, and then and the bankruptcy courts have been like this now for the better part of 20 years. In the wow. Early 2000s. Wow. That's impressive, actually. Yeah. The early 2000s, they, they started moving toward electronic case filing. It was optional back then. And um, we used to file everything in paper. And um, you can still do that um, in emergencies. And as luck would have it, my very first filing required me going to the yeah. court and filing in paper. <laughs> mm. um, because Paper? What's this? Yeah, so this was a, a, an emergency filing because my client was about to be evicted and um, I was trying to file on the eve of her trial and by the time I got all the documentation together it was after hours and I went online. You can file 24-7 with electronic case wow. filing. So, and, and it's, sta it's time stamped as of the time you file it. So if you file it at three o'clock in the morning, your bankruptcy is officially filed at 3 a.m. Um, I went online, not ever having to file a case for a client on my own. Um, I was unable to test my case filing. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently there was some, some malfunction in how my account was set up and I wasn't allowed to file the case. 
Oh, no. So my client had a 9 o'clock trial the following morning. Fortunately, the bankruptcy court opens at 8.30, and I was standing at the door when they opened. Um, went in and filed. That service right there. There right? you go. <laughs> I filed her case by hand, um, shared some more stories with the with the uh, the clerks in the court about <laughs> having to do that all the time back in the day. <laughs> we, they, it, you had to bring like five copies, an original and, and four copies. And um, the original had to have, the, they called a blue back. It was like a piece of blue construction paper on the back. <laughs> And it had to be two hole punched because they put it in a file folder. <laughs> uh, I know I'm like I'm I'm a dinosaur with this, but you know they were like, wow, that's crazy that they did all of that. <laughs> um, but fortunately, it worked out. I got her stuff filed, and I sent her a picture of her receipt, so she had it at the, at, at the trial for right. her eviction, so she was able to stop that. But I mean, that's that that's part of you know what's going on you have to kind of be constantly thinking on your feet and fortunately i had i had that wiggle room there of you know figuring out i couldn't do it the evening before and knowing that i had the morning to get over there and do it so well and you'd had some out. experience at doing actual well, paperwork yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lots of experience doing it um, but again it was you know it's it's a different perspective when you're filing on you know for a creditor because you know we're just responding to our you know our customers filing of bankruptcy and it's generally some at some point later in the bankruptcy case not you know as soon as they they file (laughs) yeah so it's it's just it's a different perspective so again still back along the same thread Mm -hmm. I'm, i'm a lawyer um let's say i i've got your basic paperwork done i I know how it works maybe i've done my five years or three years in bankruptcy Mm -hmm. and i want to start my own business what what did what did this average for you i don't know ballpark it i don't know if you know the exact number but how much did it really cost for you to do this because the cost of starting your own business is way down from what it used to be um surprisingly low Um, right so I, historically, I guess some of the biggest expenses are office space, um, you know, marketing. Marketing still pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just different, you know. It's, and nobody's putting an advertisement in. The, <laughs> I don't even know if they have that. Used to have the penny saver around here, but yeah, where yeah. I grew up, we used to have you know a weekly paper that right. that would get delivered by some high school kid. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and the green sheet. Well, you wouldn't remember that. Yeah. No, actually, we had green sheets. Yeah. Oh, you did. I think they actually yeah. still have the green sheet. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it fairly recently, but green sheet, green <laughs> <you buy>? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, there's no advertising in you know in, in paper anymore, um, or the yellow pages. Right. Um, it's just different, but yeah, it's still expensive. It's, yeah. it's, it's expensive, <laughs> and 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 it's. It, I think for me, I'm still trying to feel out what's effective, but the other costs. Um, Seriously, I, I'm my my overhead is pretty low, so I'm fortunate because I don't have anybody else to pay. Um, no, so that's there's no, there's no salaries. That's the efficiency. No, yeah, the, <laughs> uh, benefits are uh, not non-existent. Sure. Um, so you know, I got health insurance through my wife's employer, um, but I, office space is uh, office sharing. Um, I use Regis, and you know they have offices all over the world. I can use I can walk into any one of them and rent an office by the hour right um, for 15 bucks an hour so what i'm currently doing is i pay 45 bucks a month uh, to have a address at a local office right and i can go in there and pick up my mail whenever Um, when i have a a client that i actually need to consult with um, i'll reserve an office with an app online on my phone and show up you know 10 15 minutes before the client gets there (laughs) set up in the office and they come in my receptionist will walk them back to my office and i'll talk to them and when we're done they leave i leave and they know no different it's it's an office space that's right. shared by and this office is like, if you don't have <laughs> your degree on the wall and plants no no i have it, my degree in my closet at home but it, it's it's the the lincoln lawyer of 2020 yeah, much. yeah. yeah. It, it, it very it very much is i mean and and that very first client you know because we filed a an emergency filing so when you file a bankruptcy, you file a petition and a number of schedules of various t- types of information. 
um, to file the case, to get it started, you really only need to file the petition. So we filed the petition on the day we needed to start our case. And then we had 14 days to file the balance of the documentation. And on the eve of the 14th day, I was able to pin her down at a Starbucks and we sat down at Starbucks and went through all the documentation on my laptop. Which is even cheaper than the office. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my it's not my my, my preferred place. It is expensive coffee. It, the coffee's <laughs> expensive, but the it it's not it's not the most confidential area. But it was right. that. it was yeah. again after hours and I had to file that night. All right, so with all this all this hoop jumping, it's all a little bit different. You gotta figure out Instead of which one's better, the green sheet or yellow page, you got to figure out which one's better, Yelp or Facebook or whatever. But I mean, it's it's just it's different. Yep. Um, and so you you got this off the ground for just a few grand, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think I got my my overhead to, I think all in. Um, once I settle in on where I think I'm going to be for marketing and all of the the aspects of running the actual office. Um, about twenty five hundred dollars a month will be my overhead. That is just not so, bad. So yeah, that's that's, that's nice. yeah, that's basically two bankruptcy cases, and I cover my my monthly overhead. Two, two. So right. if I get two clients a month, I'm breaking even. Right. I don't get paid. But right. No. <laughs> right. 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 So, but right. yeah, I mean, so I, I I when I when I put pen to paper as I was laying all this out, you know, starting back you know back in the summer. Um, I was looking at, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to, you know, be, you know, the, the bankruptcy mill type law firm that's doing 100 cases a month because I can't with one lawyer. I'd have to hire people. Um, and then come, with that comes, you know, the nightmare of HR and, and all yeah. of that stuff. So I'm trying to avoid that. So I think like the sweet spot of the number of cases I'm looking at would be between 15 and 20 a month if I can get there and I, I think that would be kind of a it, it would be full-time and then some so 15 to 20 people would take you 40 hours yeah I mean give or take I mean it, it takes basically the, the the process of actually meeting with cust with a client um, I would meet with them initially up front for a consultation about an hour um, if they decide to move forward um, I fill out, you know, my retainer agreement, and um, I've kind of automated a lot of the back, the back office stuff. Um, my case management software has a like a digital package, um, where back in the day you'd have to give the client a, you know, 25-page packet of information they needed to fill out a form on, and then they had to bring it back in with all their documents, and you had to manually enter it into your case management system, create their bankruptcy forms go over with them and file them. Now my, cus my client will get an email that says, uh, log in here, here's your unique login, create a password when you log in, and fill out the form. And they can fill out as much as they want, right. come back, it'll pick up where they left off. I can check in on them to see how far along they are. If they have questions, they can come to me, I can look at what they've put in. Um, so w I can do this all online and they can take care of all of their 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 homework right. for filing the bankruptcy at their leisure. Um, there's a requirement that they they take a pre-filing um, credit counseling course. Um, that's also online. I'll provide them with a login. <laughs> um, Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know they would have that, but yep. I, make, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, there's actually two. They need to do one before they file, and then they need to do one before the case is over. Um, so there's a there's a debtor, debtor um, education course and then a credit counseling. Um, so the debtor education is uh, bankruptcy is an option, but here are some of the other options like credit counseling and, and you know, where you go, somebody will package all of your debt together and make smaller payments, ne negotiate yeah, with right, your creditors. Right. Um, so that, that's costly and it doesn't, and it still impacts your credit negatively. Um, so f for a lot of clients, um, I, I have to I have to explain that's available to them, um, but it doesn't really accomplish what most people want to accomplish, and that's kind of the fresh start that bankruptcy offers. Right. Your credit's ruined already, um, so why not just you know eat the frog, as Mark <laughs> Twain says, get it over with, 
and then start rebuilding your credit. And Dwayne. that's and that nice. second you like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then their second the second um, course is basically you're now you're in bankruptcy, you're about to get a discharge, um, you're gonna get your fresh start as they call it, and um, here's what you can do to start rebuilding your credit. You know, go get a car loan. Okay. You know, right, right, right. High interest rate, but you know, buy a used car, um, pay it off on time, get a secured credit card. Um, I Pay have that some, off on time. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have some resources I can supply my clients when, when they're done with their bankruptcy and, um, and help them kind of get on the road toward rebuilding their credit and starting over. Um, but, you know, all of this is trying to get it to the point where I can keep my overhead low and I can keep my fees lower, um, not only to compete with, you know, the massive amount of competition that is out there, but um, I think I can... I can more efficiently process 20 clients a month by doing it this way and not have the burden for them or, or myself. So, you know, I'd be able to go to my kids' school events in the middle of the day and, and still be able to, you know, work with my clients when they need me to work with them. That's the beautiful part about owning your own company mm -hmm. is that you now set your own hours and you can decide to work to the level you want or back off of it right and it's completely variable i love that yep and yeah i'm excited for you this is gonna be this is gonna be good yeah, oh yeah, yeah. we're we are definitely happy for you thank you thank you so, so we're, we're about the, we're about halfway through these we uh, should want, let's give him a break this for a moment let's okay. give him a break and let's uh let's talk about the ave maria and you can talk about the uh the new world so um mild to medium more towards the mild yeah, I agree. Yeah, that, no, uh, that's how it's rated. But I am getting a, a kind of a spicy flavor off of it. A little bit. Mine's peppery. That, that I, I kind of like. Well, pepper is a spice. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying it's not, it's not all the other spices because pepper seems to be its own spice I, when people talk about it. It's not just pepper, though. It's, it, there's something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah, nail it down. There is. That's why, that's why I said spice instead of just pepper. It's a, it's a woody flavor. But it's, I mean, it's... I like it. It's smooth. It, yeah, it is smooth. Uh, the ash isn't raining all over me. I'm very happy about oh, that. Oh, con so construction. Great construction. Yeah, great construction. Construction's great. No corrections. Burning perfectly evenly. I like that. Very clean wrapper. It was very nice. Um, I I thought that uh, um, the, the, the smooth and the mild would be really smooth and mild, but the retrohale's a little harsh, so I wish the retrohale a little smoother. Uh, at, at, at a retail of seven fifty, uh, this is about what I would expect. Yeah, I agree. It's not, it's not top of the line for seven fifty. Uh, it's about what I expect. But the great news is, it's not a failure. It's 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 no. a really good cigar. It's no. got a it's got a beautiful band on it. It does have a beautiful band. And show the people. Uh, it's and. I like that for for this price point for being more of a mild, you get some actual flavor from it. Yes, yeah, you do, you do. There, I, I, me, I'm I'm getting mostly woodiness, a little woodiness, a little pepper. I'm not getting a, whatever spices you're also picking up. I'm getting, but, um, yeah, I'm I'm getting just something something smooth, else up from pepper. Smooth, pleasant. I think almost anybody could smoke it. I think it'd be a nice intro if you're uh, not ready for bold cigars yet. Yes. I'm not getting a huge nicotine hit off it or anything weird like that. Yeah, if you it's want to, if you want to transition from a mild that has a very base flavor, doesn't have a lot doesn't have much complexity to it and you want to you want to bump up just a little bit to something that's got some kind of flavor to it. Great option. Now, I do apologize that we didn't have a third Ave Maria for Vinny. So Vinny has the New World and it's also AJ Fernandez in the mildish category. A little bit different. It's not all Nicaraguan like this one's a little bit more. I mean, all the filler and binder Nicaraguan. That one I think has a Mexican uh, filler. Uh, what do you think of that one? Um, it's it's mild. Um, I prefer myself more more. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, we're all there. So, yeah. But we're in a um, mild zone yeah. right now. Um, I mean, it's it's a good cigar. I, it actually. Now, I mentioned earlier it, it might burn all the way through this, but <laughs> my, my last... Uh, Hasn't gone out on you. No, it did. I just loved it. Oh, I, just loved it. I missed so, it. <laughs> it. It just went out. But um, it, it's got, got a pretty good flavor, but um, it's... 
I, I have a hard time enjoying a very mild cigar because it's I, I, I really I don't smoke as often as you guys. Are you just bored? No, it's not that I'm bored. It's just, uh, I, I, I try to get my, you know, a whole week's worth of smoke into. Oh, oh into, you want to get some bang for your two. buck. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Okay. So, all right. Um, yeah. Not a bad cigar at all, um, but I don't know if I would, if I would, I don't know how much are these? Seven? Seven fifty? Yeah. Eight bucks? No one's right. right yeah. seven. Eight. I mean, this is usually what I spend for a cigar. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, it, it's not bad. And I would, I would recommend it if you like, you know, the more mild side. Yep. So in the Eagle Rare, mm-hmm. so I, I did. We didn't do the chill cubes today. I, I warmed no. mine up, and I love it that way. Yeah, no, it's it's good. It's got a little, little, little kick. Not a big kick. It's got a little kick to it. It's what ten percent rye, <laughs> which is in the sweet spots for rye, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but not uh, a rye fan. I've no, no, he's not a rye fan. No, I, no, I, I'm not. But it. Uh, this percentage, I, I like this percentage, or I like all the way. The in between, especially the fifty-one percent, I really don't care for. This this is really good. I uh, like it. It has a sweetness I to c- it. I can see why people like it. Yeah, it has a sweetness to it. It's it's sort of like the first step up from your basic Buffalo Trace, right? You get the Buffalo Trace. I think it's it retails for like twenty-two to twenty-five, just about everywhere. Somewhere in there, yeah. Um, this one is supposed to just be 27, 28, but like we said, it's really hard to find. Um, I think it's got a sweetness over it that the uh, Buffalo Trace doesn't have. What and is this? This is 90 proof, right? I, I believe, oh, uh, I didn't write it down. Yeah, maybe you can check the bottle. I think it is. I think it is 90. I think it's a bit higher than 80. 45% by volume. Go. It is 30. There you go. So it's 90. I think it's got a little sweetness on top of Buffalo Trace. So if you like Buffalo Trace, this is just a little kick of sweet on top of that. But basically, it's Buffalo Trace, right? Yeah, it goes down incredibly smooth. What, what does our tech support think of it? <laughs> tech support's not a fan. Tech support tech is support not a fan. Like it. But it sounds like maybe but I, I need to text, add a little a cube of ice. Tech support is... Uh, to it. Yeah, it. yeah, maybe. Yeah, you should try that. It might be uh, because it's 90 for you. But te- tech support also likes Irish whiskeys. Yes. As opposed to Kentucky whiskey. So tech support that's has fine. Probably seven or eight shots of Irish whiskey before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's how she could taste this is beyond anyone's guess. Right. Yeah. So. What for reserve? Nice. Yes. That was, that was the gift that I got. Nice. Okay. Oh. So yeah. what do you think of the, uh, the trace? Um, it's good. It's, um, it's kind of smooth. Um, it doesn't. Is that my phone? Okay, this Thanks. is the bourbon. No, no, it's not your phone. No, so it's the bourbon. So I wasn't sure which word yeah. it was. Okay, um, yeah, it's the bourbon. Yeah, I like the bourbon. I would yeah. never drop someone else's phone. Only <laughs> mine. Yeah, I was just showing these guys a picture of. Uh, I showed up at my office on Thursday, and um, my receptionist uh, said, uh, "We got some mail and something extra." Oh. And she reaches into a drawer and pulls out a 1.75 liter uh. bottle of Woodford Reserve yeah. that. A former colleague of mine dropped off as a congratulations <laughs> from starting oh, the firm. Nice. That's a man who likes yes. you. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I'm going to send him a link to this podcast. So thank you, John Mead. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kicking that out to you. All Excellent. Right. So good shout, shout out. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And good, good taste in whiskey there. Mm-hmm. Do you like the rare? Do you like the Eagle Rare? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Is that a summary? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's... it's. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the... Uh, do you like the Woodford better? Uh, yeah, I do like the Woodford better. Okay, so it's uh, it's good though. It doesn't have a lot of bite. It's it's. I like my bourbons to be like smooth, and not you know kind of. Are you a regular icer of them, or are you normally neat? I don't normally. I I like vodka on ice, but otherwise much everything else is neat. Okay, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so vodka is my uh, my low carb drink of choice Vodka there you go lime <laughs> on the rocks oh yeah yeah i'm in the camp with uh you know the the phrase anything glenn yeah i'm like anything 80 yeah, yeah. <laughs> 80 plus I'm 80 plus 80 yeah. plus i'm in anything like, glenn i'm in like glenn swingers plus better uh well i was actually thinking of anything glenn from um oh no swingers Vince no Vaughan. Uh, okay, so it was also... I, I thought you were thinking about that Ozarks TV show. No, did they say it there too? 
Oh my God, that's I, I a common thought, phrase, I guess. I thought I heard it in that. Yeah, in Swingers, Vince Vaughn, when they were in Vegas, uh, he's at a bar in Vegas. He's like, uh, "Get me, uh, get me some scotch, uh, Glenn Fittich, Glenn, uh, anything, Glenn." <laughs> okay, so I think the first place that appeared was a bit older, and it was, um, it was there were there were a bunch of salesmen. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Okay. That's where it is. Yeah, Alec yeah. Baldwin. Yeah, Baldwin. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. We well, we got our reviews in. Okay. Now so, we can hammer on you some more. All right. <laughs> so uh, we we've discussed the business side of things. Mm -hmm. Let, let's let's talk a little bit about the client side. Okay. So, what are some of the reasons somebody would want to file for bankruptcy? <sighs> yeah, yeah, we hadn't gone there. Yeah, I want to go there. I want, and and then the follow up is, how do I avoid it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pay everything on time. Well, <laughs> well what do you? I, well, do the first thing, and then we'll All follow right. up. Well, we could start with the second thing because the okay. second thing is, for the most part. You can't avoid it sometimes. What's the most common things that cause it? Um, loss of employment, um, medical issues, you know, massive medical debt. Um, even people Get with microphone sorry, close to you. Um, even people with with health insurance, um, you know, you get cancer and you walk away with uninsured debt in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the extensiveness of the treatment. Um, you know, my, I've, people in my own family you know, with medical insurance have had to file bankruptcy because they had $200,000 in, in medical bills that they, they could never pay. So, you know, the, those people are the ones that I really think need the help and okay. yeah. need the opportunity to get out from underneath the the burden of that much debt because once you get once you start falling behind there's there's almost no way to catch up and then you start spending retirement money right and right. vacation money 401 and for you know yeah. your 401k and pension and borrowing against that and start leveraging your kids college tuition savings and it, it goes quickly I mean it I mean it doesn't the average cancer treatment in the United States is over a million dollars yeah, and, and your mm -hmm. insurance is only going to pay a portion of that, no matter how good it is. So, you're going to walk away with uninsured debt that is in the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, and nearly nobody can pay that in any reasonable amount of time. So, is so one thing you could do on top of your medical insurance is get an umbrella plan, which are much cheaper because everybody else has to pay out first, and then they pay out. Sure. Is that? Is that something you would recommend? Is, that, is this the most common? Is medical problems? Medical, this... medical and, and loss of work. So, you know, you, you qualify. Most people are, are able to get far more credit than they should get. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So free money is easy money. And in, in, in our culture, when you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, right, wrong, or indifferent, people do it. You yeah. Know, they buy the, buy new cars every couple of years and... Uh, you know, and, and new TVs and new stereos and yeah. new iPhones. And, you know, before you know it, you, you have $40,000 in debt and you're paying, you know, $1,000 a month on credit cards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you lose a job and you can't find one for, you know, six months. Yeah. Or worse, you're paying the minimum yeah. on your, yeah. your credit card. Yeah, right? you know, and it takes 30 years to pay off a credit card if you pay the minimum. Right. Well, well, no. I mean, technically, would you ever pay it off? You wouldn't. Well, you're still spending on yeah. it, right? Well, yeah. If you yeah. if you continue to spend on it, yes. Uh, so even if you if if you fall far enough behind where they shut off your line of credit, you're still going to have to pay yeah. the minimum forever. And I mean, how how realistic is that for most most Americans? And I read something a couple of months back that the, the more than fifty percent of Americans have less than four hundred dollars saved. Yeah, I saw that. That a, uh, I think it would. I think the number I saw was twelve hundred. That you need to have a minimum of twelve hundred for an emergency failure, like my transmission went yeah. out or whatever. And that something like seventy five percent people in America, again, we'll say Americans, um, did not even have a twelve hundred dollar buffer. And and I I think we do have 
too much credit extended to us. When we were buying our first house, I was still in college. My wife had started working probably just three years prior with her degree. And we were going to buy a house. And we were going to buy a $69,000 house. And we were pre-approved for a quarter of a million dollars. And I went, what? Who in their yeah. right mind would buy a quarter million dollar house where we are today? But I think, I mean, I think well, some people would. We, we were, a lot of people do. We, we were going for a 180K house. And they said we were approved up to 500K. Oh, my God. And you're not even in California. It's like, there's <laughs> no way I would take that on. But a lot, no of people, a lot of people do. And they, they buy the house. And they'll turn around and sell that house. And then buy a bigger house. And then sell that house. And buy a bigger house. And then lose a job. And now you're right. three houses in. You've, you spent the equity from your first two houses on your third house. Yeah. And now the the market, the real estate market, is starting to soften. Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and now your equity is non-existent because you know you put you put right. you know seventy five thousand dollars down from the equity from the last house in the current house, and now your value dropped since you bought it, and that equity is now no longer. Yep. And what do you do? You so know? tech support uh, mentioned about bankruptcy due to medical transport for a high le higher level of care so if you need need to be transported out from the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. for an emergency you need to be in the hospital now you yep. can't wait for an hour drive that's really expensive absolutely now, even if it's not yeah. cancer even if it's just a one-time event yeah, it's one minor. time and, event and if you don't have that 1200 a huge mm -hmm. cost that you're well, getting saddled with one of the things at, at, in my in my blog at the labu law.com <laughs> do it again um, <laughs> the labu law t-h-e-l-o-b-u-e-l-a-w.com um i in doing some research about topics to write about um i kept coming across um seniors and fixed incomes clearly higher than than average right. medical expenses. Uh, of course. Um, even on Medicare and with Medicare Part B and Part D and all of the things that you need to have to go along with Medicare, it's not covering everything. So my, my, own, my own mom recently broke her shoulder and had to take an ambulance to the hospital and the ambulance wasn't paid for. You know, At all? Por a portion of it. Okay. But she's got you know medical bills. She spent a couple of days in the hospital and then two weeks in in a rehab facility and she didn't even get surgery because she wasn't a candidate for the surgery and she's got more than a couple of thousand dollars worth of bills from her from her hospital and right. and, and rehab stay and and a she, fixed income and a fixed income and she gets, right she gets like twelve hundred dollars a month in social security right and, and you don't have that buffer for that exactly yeah. so she she's got basically no ability to to pay those extra payments because she's living from social security check to social security check. So, you know, if, if she had, if she had, you know, God forbid got cancer and had a hundred thousand dollar bill, how would she pay for it? She can't, right? There's yeah. no way she can't just get up and go to work. You know, she's not going to get a six figure job at 80 years old and all of a sudden start paying that money. So, you know, what do they do? So that, that's, that's an area that I found gets a whole lot of play on social media it, when, when you have articles or, that are focused on fixed income individuals in, in, in the market today that are, have zero ability to have any flexibility to, to tackle those sorts of problems that are more likely to happen because of their advanced right, age. Right, right, right. You know, and now people are living longer uh, they're they're out certainly outliving their retirement, you know. The people retire yes. retire in their late sixties and then live into their nineties. Right. They didn't save enough to live. They, you know, work. They worked forty years, forty five years, and then years, live thirty more. And then yeah. they, they, you can't <laughs> save for thirty years of no employment, mm -hmm. working forty five years and still having to live during that forty five years. Yep. You know, and raising children and all the expenses that go along with that. So, the the challenges, the financial challenges that come along with having a fixed income and nobody's social security is going up 
and keeping pace with the cost of living. Well, what they're but doing, they're, they're going to push their Social Security age out to, I think it'll probably be close to 70 when sure. we retire. Sure, but, right? if, but if you're already on Social Security, right, you know, right. and, and my, my mom, she was, she was a, a stay-at-home mom for a good portion of her working years, so she didn't contribute as much as most of us will into the Social Security system. Right. So she only gets about 1200 a month. Right. I mean, her rent is like 950 a month. So that covers it. Yeah. There, you know, she yeah. she eats and and, and that's that's basically it. So she's not living some extravagant life, lifestyle, and you know, one bump in the road and it her financial situation becomes extremely tenuous. So it sounds like you yeah. start with ramen and then you end with ramen. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. And and it's it's just you know it's there are a lot of people, a whole lot of people, more more so than we care to think about, that are one illness one car accident or one paycheck one paycheck away from a catastrophic financial situation so this is this could happen to anybody you anyone don't have to do anything wrong. absolutely anybody yeah. absolutely anybody and you know it, it's it's this is something that i that i speak to my my clients about when they're thinking about it about filing bankruptcy and there's a stigma that goes along with it you know i made agreements to make these payments right and, you know, that's You're all, like, get over that. that yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, that's, and it's not because I want you to file bankruptcy because it's a financial benefit for me because I get paid to do it for but you. But because it's a financial benefit to you. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm yeah. not even that. No, it's, not you, it's, you, them, yeah, them. To them because, you know, the, the whole purpose of this, you know, 150 years ago, we put people in prison because they didn't pay their debts. We don't do that anymore. No, it's too expensive. <laughs> well, yeah. but the, the, the bank... Having people who are able to contribute to the economy is the biggest value within right. our economy. Right. And if, if people are in debt and they're incapable of going shopping you know, at Christmas time and spending $10,000 on Christmas presents because they don't have the money, that's a burden on the economy. So if you're, if you're in debt and you can't spend, you're actually impeding the growth of the economy. Right, right. So if, if, you are, if you take a step back, swallow your pride, Filing bankruptcy is public record, but nobody's going to go to the court to see if you filed. <laughs> so unless you tell them, or they're one of your creditors, and your creditors aren't going to talk about you behind your back. So nobody needs to know you filed bankruptcy. Just file bankruptcy. Right. Get your fresh start that you're entitled to under the law, and get back on your feet, start rebuilding your credit, and start contributing again. Start living your life right. and putting yourself in a position to be a benefit instead of a detriment to the economic process. And it's not only that you're a detriment to the economic process, it's a de detriment to you because people are struggling. And I, I, read, I read in another article that was, well, the, uh, the article that I read was, a, it was a University of Notre Dame law review article that came out a couple of years back. And um, they did some analysis of uh, what they called living in the sweat box. And the, the sweat box was a term that came out of uh, the 2005 bankruptcy reform um, where people that were struggling with, with financial difficulties um, for a period of time, uh, an undefined period of time, but um, from the moment I lost that job and I started falling behind on my credit cards till the time I actually filed bankruptcy. In 2007, was an average of about four months. Yeah. By 2017, it was more than 24 months. With the 2008 sitting right there, right? That's yeah. The, that's the mark. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I mean, the, the the we had the recession in 2008, 2009, but um, but the stigma of filing bankruptcy for no reason that we can t figure out at this point um, seems to have forced people to struggle with their debt longer before they actually say, I have no other alternative. Which but probably to sets them back even farther. Absolutely, because the more you pay on a credit card that you're ultimately going to discharge in bankruptcy, the Can less... Can they? At the, I thought credit cards had, you know... Credit cards are absolutely dischargeable. Oh, I thought they yeah. were immune or something. No, 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 they're not. You, okay. They're unsecured debt, and nearly every unsecured debt is discharged in, in almost all bankruptcies. Are, is is uh, student loan? Student loans are mostly non-dischargeable. There's That's some non-government insured student loans that are beyond like seven years. There's a whole 
calculus you have to do around the district. That's why I hire you. Yes. <laughs> um, so taxes and um, student loan debt, um, um, indebtedness that was obtained through fraud. Um, if you get sued, because, that one seems fair. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you get sued for wrongful death as a result of drunk driving, you can't discharge your, you know, your your okay. liability under that. There's a number of. Of, of things that are absolutely not dischargeable through bankruptcy right. and for good reason. Um, student loans, I don't know if, if, if a, an absolute non-dischargeability um, of student loans is so that really, one's variable? It, it, it's slightly. Okay. Um, and it's um, becoming more amorphous as, as time goes on. Just recently there was a case in New York where um, a, a former um, a vet went to school after he got out of the military, incurred $200,000 in student loans Ooh. and, and um, was able to discharge it um, as a result of his his case in the bankruptcy court. It's being appealed currently um, by the Department of Education. But you're up and you're current. I like that. Yep. yep. <laughs> so that was that was a big case and it, it's fairly recent. The last, uh, probably the last month or so it, that one came out and the appeal has just been filed. So it's, that's going to be a few years, and that one might ultimately end up at the Supreme Court, because I think that question is is paramount to the future of bankruptcy, because student debt is obviously growing, and the cost of education is is yeah, increasing right. exponentially. Right, much um, higher than inflation. Yeah, you know, so you, salaries, even for co the college educated, have gone up, but not to the extent that tuition has gone up. Right. So, you know, for yeah. a $200,000 college education to have a $40,000 uh, salary for the first couple of years, eventually you'll make more, but, yeah. you know, you're going to be paying on that student debt for your entire professional life. To you, you know, they're starting to um, add in sort of an educational process where they tell people, okay, if this, if this is what your tuition is going to be, this degree, this degree, this degree, you should not be getting these degrees. Those are, that's too expensive. You need to get this degree, this degree, this degree to make this much money, to pay back that much debt, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, don't take a $200,000 debt to get a sociology degree or to get uh, an English degree or to get a communications degree. The ones you can't make, the, the ones that yeah. aren't in the higher... So don't go to Harvard without a full ride scholarship and get some lower know, end yeah, paying job yeah. so you, you with that degree yeah right. so you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna be a school teacher with a with a, a four hundred thousand right. dollar harvard education and expect right. to ever repay right the they're starting to add that okay. and i think that should have been added a so, long time ago that consultation there are yeah. they, they are doing that and they yeah. have been doing that yeah. for a long time so the the cost of your education compared to the value of the that expectation education. of earnings yes right that that's been in place for a while um other programs that there have been like school teachers um if you if you go to an underserved school district you know inner city oh, school districts yeah um there there are programs for you know you work you work in you know harlem in new york as an example um it's underserved uh, a lot of teachers don't want to teach there um so if you teach in an underserved area for 10 years, um, your student loans will be forgiven if they're current at the end of the 10 years. So you pay on them for 10 years and then right. whatever's left is paid off. That's um, nice. That's an area that's actually under attack currently by our present. I didn't know that. Our present administration <laughs> has just at this week started oh, contemplating. Oh, you're really current. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I happen to be up to speed on these things. Um, just this week has, has announced that they're considering eliminating student debt <laughs> forgiveness <laughs> programs. So there, there has to be, um, if, I'm, I'm not a fan of free public education, I think that's, that's crazy, um, but there has to be an ability to obtain higher education that's reasonably priced, that's not going to send you to my office at some point. Well, I think there is. Five, I mean, there is. You, you, you start with a community college or whatever they're calling them now because that, that became like a, a pariah word. Yeah. So whatever. You, you do that, then you finish it a four-year, and it could, even that one could be online. And just, you know, having the degree, 
It doesn't have to be from Penn. It does, you know, you, you do that. And I think, there, I think that's becoming far more common. Yeah, but the, you so know, there's... I, I want to... Don't mean to interrupt, no, go ahead, but go ahead. I want to get back to consumers who are going to see you. Okay. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we so, trail off a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody needs to file bankruptcy. You talked about the reason. We, we've talked about the reasons why people should file bankruptcy or the situations they get in mm -hmm. that would cause them to file bankruptcy. And you kind of talked about the the time period between you know when people should file and when they actually file. Now, what are the benefits of filing? We, you touched on that a little bit. Okay. Can you go into that some more? Yeah. Um, so let's use an example of I, I'm paying $1,000 a month in minimum payments across the board on my, on my debt. Um, and I do this for 24 months while I'm struggling to make those payments. I'm starting to fall behind on some, but I'm keeping others current, and I'm paying 1000 a month. And I paid twenty-four thousand dollars on those minimum payments over the course of the two years. If I filed bankruptcy in month two and got my discharge, the twenty-two thousand dollars that I paid towards those debts would be in my pocket today. Right, right. That's why you so, go earlier. Yeah. So the the stigma that I mentioned earlier, and and my ego is preventing me from filing bankruptcy. Is, is actually doing you more harm and it's creating a more difficult uh, road to the fresh start for people who wait too long to file bankruptcy. Right. Um, I, and, I, and just in my short time of doing this, and even on when I was working for the creditors, I saw people who lost their homes because they waited too long. You know, I, I lost my job and I got it, five interviews for new jobs and none of those interviews ever panned out and they ended up getting foreclosed on. If they had filed their bankruptcy, we could have stopped their foreclosure. We could have worked out some arrangement in a Chapter 13 case where you could make smaller payments to get caught up while you remain current and save your home. So if they had any equity in that house, it's now gone. Don't, so, some, so don't, kind of, don't some states have protection of your home specifically? They do. Um, there's, there's different programs for... Um, non-bankruptcy relief in your home like loan modifications and forbear forbearance plans but you have to be willing to work with your lender to do those yeah. uh, they have to be willing to work with you and you have to be in a financial situation to be able to make those payments um, part of the the post recession world that we live in um, there's a lot of regulation now around um, the ability to pay um, Prior to 2008, if you had a heartbeat, you could get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mean, yeah. There, there was yeah. no underwriting yeah. in mortgage, mortgage lending. Um, you basically show up, and there were quite a few programs out there where you didn't even have to prove how much you made. Wow. And we, called them cool. li we called them liar loans. Right. Um, I, was in, I was involved in a case in California where um, somebody got a house they couldn't afford. They got a loan, no doc loan. They weren't required to provide evidence that they made X number of dollars, right? And they got the loan based on their word. Um, soon after they got the loan, they defaulted, and foreclosure was started. They filed bankruptcy to stop the foreclosure. Um, the bankruptcy case was being handled by my office here in Texas, but the, the property was in California, um, and the lender wanted to sue the customer because they claimed they misrepresented their income in the loan application. Even though they didn't ask. But it was a no dog. Correct. <laughs> so my office basically told the lender, you can't really claim that since you didn't make that part of your application process. Right. So if you're, if you're assuming the risk that what they're telling you is accurate, then the risk is they were lying. <laughs> And those loans were called liar loans because people lied about how much they made because you didn't ask them to provide you evidence of their, their income. So they convinced some other law firm to take the suit to the bankruptcy court, and they lost. And the judge specifically said, you know, they dismissed the case. <laughs> the judge said, you call these liar loans. 
and you have the gall to come before me and try to get somebody on fraud because they lied? I mean, you, you create the system that allows them to lie. You don't get the benefit of using the justice system right. yeah, they when tried, they do lie. They, they try to get yeah. both ends of Exactly. That. So, you know, th those, those are the situations where, you know, I, I know that there's, we want, we want people to be smart about their finances. And most people are. And, and most people understand what they can pay at the moment. Right. They don't prepare for what could be two years, 10 years, 20 years down the road. Well, not just that. I think in the case of California, they thought, I'm just going to get a house. It doesn't matter what cost it is because I will get equity from the appreciation and I'll sell it later. Who cares? It's easy peasy, right? Let's just, let's just do this. Yep. And then when it turned, uh, they weren't ready for that. And, and neither were the lenders because the lenders thought, even if they don't have the money, it'll go up. And when we, re, when we reclaim it, uh, then we can sell for more than it was before. So who cares? Oh, so I think everybody was counting on that. Yeah, of course. I, I never cared for variable rate well, mortgages. Variable or, rate. And or no money down they mortgages. Had, they had, yeah. we, had, we, had, we had these like pick a payment mortgages where you could pay a fully amortized payment, principal and interest. Um, for repayment over you know thirty years. Oh, and they had <laughs> interest only. Well, you could pay. Yeah. Well, oh. These 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 were loans <laughs> where you could actually your statement came with like four payment options: a fully amortized payment, pr principal and interest yeah. for the thirty year repay, a fifteen year so principal and uh, higher principal, lower interest. That's the way to go. Possibly for some people, not everyone. Um, a no interest, and then they had negative amortization where you would pay less than Ooh. the interest that accrued during that month. So whatever you didn't pay would get added to your principal. <laughs> so now your principal balance is going up because you're not even paying oh, enough yeah, interest. Yeah, yeah. That, you've got to really be banking on appreciation well, of property and, value. And, and in the early 2000s in California when I actually lived right, there. Right, right, it made right, sense. Yeah, so I, I think I told you guys before you know, that, that when I was living there before I moved here in 2005, the my my value of my home in Southern California was was going up ten grand every time a house sold because all they did the appraiser would come in and look for a comparable look sale. for comps yeah they look for a comparable sale and add ten grand to it the last one the last twenty four hundred square foot house that sold was three hundred fifty thousand this is one's three sixty and then the next nice. one's three seventy so every sale wow. they add ten thousand to so my house was going up in value ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars a month. Right. A month. Right. You know, so over the course of three years, that last house that I sold doubled in value in three freaking years. And, you know, that obviously came to an end in 2008. Yeah. You know, so I got out just in time and moved here. But it, it was it, it was it was a situation where it was going on for the better part of 10 years, you know, from the late 90s yeah. until like 2008. Property values were increasing incrementally. People and and you know the keeping up with the Joneses in Southern California is just a way of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people were buying and selling houses every year. So I'd buy a house, even <clears> with all those costs. Yeah, they buy a house. I mean, and 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 in a year your house went up, you know, hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You sell it. You take that one fifty. You roll it into the next house. But there was thirty k in fees. Yeah, but you but you got a hundred and fifty out of the house that you yeah. lived in for a year. Yeah, you know, so and even unpack. Yeah, and and that's <laughs> that's what a lot of people were doing. They were just you know buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. Like I was refinancing my house every three months. Three months. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a I had a a mortgage banker in my office building, yeah. and every couple of months he'd be like, the interest rates dropped a half a point since last time. Time to refi, and they would do a, they would do a, they would keep my docs on file. So I wouldn't even have to go right. and produce all new information. They had all my well, taxes. You things. wouldn't. Nothing yeah. changes in three months. Exactly. So in, every three months, I would, I would show up with my wife, and <laughs> and we would sign the papers, and we'd have a new mortgage, and we'd skip a payment because you know you have that first payment you don't you have to that pay. Too. So every three months, I wouldn't have to make a mortgage payment. I would roll whatever costs <laughs> there were into the new loan, and you know it would it it, it it my payment went down because the interest rates were dropping, because we were we were they were trying to. For, for to stop the
the potential of of the recession and of course the recession happened right so, so. before we close out uh Going back to the time frame between when somebody should file and when they're really filing. So when they first think that they're getting into trouble, um, what does it cost someone to talk to you about, you know, should I, should I seriously consider yeah. or should I go ahead and go through with a bankruptcy. It doesn't cost anything. I have a free consultation. Um, I'll sit down with you for an hour. Um, generally, what I've been doing is having 10, 15 minute kind of conversation on the phone just to kind of get an idea of where uh, the client potentially is, is sitting. <laughs> um, so I try to burn my face <laughs> off. <laughs> um, and I can get a pretty good idea for most people in 10 minutes on the phone about where they lie and what their best avenue is going to be. And then we'll uh, set up a time to sit down in my office for about an hour and go over the documentation because most people don't truly have a full understanding of where their financial situation is until I start kind of looking at their bank statements and their tax records and their pay stubs and their expenses and stuff and see, to see where they truly are. Um, but basically at the end of that, that one hour conversation, I will provide them with here's where I think your best avenue to go is, and here are your options. Um, and my, So an my hour and 10 minutes of free education, Yep. and you come away with uh, an education on what your best course of action should be. Correct. Whether to file or not. Yep. And what type of filing to do. Correct. Yep. I, and then I can tell you how much, how much my fee would be. And my fee... Is, is, is basically a flat fee for most bankruptcies, um, but there are complexities in each individual case that I would take into consideration, and I would discuss those with, with the client about why the fee would be, you know, the flat fee or the flat fee plus, you know, whatever additional expenses would, would be incurred. So one advantage of going with Vinny is he cares. <laughs> You're not run through a mill. You are... You are an individual. Uh, you talk with him. You meet with him. Again, not a mill. Correct. You will meet with me. Most most bankruptcy firms, large firms, you won't ever meet the attorney until you walk into a courtroom, and that's the first time you ever meet your attorney. With with my firm, I am it. You meet with me. You talk to me. Um, I will be giving you the advice that... Um, will help you make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy is the correct option for you. And, I mean, that sounds like a great thing to me because if you're on the fence and you're just starting to think, I'm falling behind, you know, what what courses of action could I, could I take? Yep. Sounds like a great thing just to sit down and talk, uh, 10 minutes on the phone, yep. maybe an hour at the office. Yep and learn what your options really are. Exactly, and, and do it sooner than later, because the longer you wait, the more, the more expensive your bankruptcy is going to be, and ultimately, the more expensive your recovery is gonna be, because you're spending money now that you could have later. And the longer amount of time mm -hmm. to recover. Exactly, yeah. All right, good information. Yeah. I like it very much. Yeah, so let's wrap up with the cigar. Yep. Uh, I, it never changed for me. No, and it was a perfect smoke all the way through. It was very good construction. The light draw did not get hot on me a lot because I'm, a, I'm a, a heavy toker. I'm a fast smoker, and they, some cigars can get hot on me, a little acrid. There's that a happens. song in there You're somewhere. a joker? <laughs> I am not a joker. <laughs> Uh, but this one didn't. This Some one of didn't us have would any differ problem. on didn't that. Didn't have any problem. Well, you can see mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I, you know, dropped mine long before these two, so no issue. It didn't. Get, it was nice that it didn't get hot. I hate it when they get hot. Yeah. So I think. And what about yours? Um, actually, I think this is as I'm getting closer to the end. It, it seems to be getting a little bit stronger. So it's. Um, oh. Yeah. It was. Nice. It was a lot lighter. A lot. It's getting a little more bold toward the end. It started to un unravel. I think that's because of the, the massive fire pit in front of yeah, me. Yeah, it's a little warm here, maybe drying <laughs> it yeah, out a little. So um, I think I, I, won't, I won't hold it against the cigar. 
<laughs> but you know, usually that's one of my pet peeves is when they start unraveling for no particular reason. I don't care for them. Um, this one is, but I don't think it's its fault. <laughs> um, but it, I think this is actually a, it, it's it's turning into a pretty decent smoke. Good, good yeah, news. A new world. And ours is the <laughs> Ave Maria Immaculata. Immaculata. Yes. And yours is the AJ Fernandez New World. New World. All right. Uh, so for next week, yeah. we're still taking. Um, Recommendations. This is going to be another return to the 20s. So we're looking for the mixed drink that we might be interested in. So we've still got a uh, highball, uh, which is whiskey and ginger ale. The Southside Fizz, which is, again, the gin-lime combo. This has got a little mint thrown in. We've got the mint julep, which is, of course, a classic I think almost everyone is familiar with. I really want to do the mint julep. The bee's knees, which is, again, <laughs> another gin, lemon, honey combo. Um, so drop us a line. Throw in a vote. We'll evaluate four liquors with each of those mixes and decide which one we think is the best. We should save the mint julep for May and do it for the uh, the. Kentucky Derby. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. That's a darn yeah, good that, idea. That is a really good idea. That's a good idea. So uh, throw that our way. Let us know. Uh, next week, we're going to have the McAuliffe Gomez family 1934 Esperanza. I like the Esperanza. That is a good smoke. We're going to have a couple more of those, and that will be paired with our 20s drink selection, which is yet to be determined. So, yeah. so another plug for my firm. Yes, the, uh, do it. The website is the lobulaw.com, T H E L O B U E L A W.com. Phone number 972 695 9444. There you go. All right. And All your right. social media? Um, at Labu Law on Facebook and um, search for Labu Law on Yelp. All right. All right. Um, I feel better. Heck yeah. Thank you, guys.